finally got in the rest of the stuff that we were waiting on to complete the motor going back in the RS3. So do a little unboxing for you guys today. All of this is from the awesome people at IROS Motorsports. Thank you, Hank and Jacob, for hooking all this up. Alright, so first off, we got the ARP headsets so we can finish putting the motor back together. And we have some 034 Motorsport engine mounts, motor mounts. And a, a bracket kit for something. And that's it for this one. Ugh. Don't mind that. Alright, and then... This guy should be... The fuel pump upgrades. I believe. Yep. So this is a little pressure fuel pump. That is required for the built motor tune from Unitronic. That's all that we got. So, still missing some things. Uh, hope you'll come in soon and we'll be good to go.
So, what am I doing, you might be asking yourself. I am swapping out the uh, map sensor and the, what's, what's the other one called, pre? It's a um, pre-vacuum. It's a pre-vacuum map. It's a pre-vacuum pre-vacuum map sensor. Yeah. So I'm swapping those two guys, which are now in my lap, with other things. Swapping so these two guys out with uh, Unitronics uh, four-bar map sensors. Um, making my car not be able to run anymore until I get the correct um, tune flash to it. Uh, so I'm doing this, and we're going to be checking out um, some kind of cam issue going on uh, with the car. We will also be installing a, um, an upgraded low pressure fuel pump from IROS Motorsports. And, um, and then once that tune comes in, the car will be completely finished. Um, as far as like this stage of its life will be completely done. I'll be running the built motor file then, um, which give me a little bit more horsepower, but a lot more torque, which is gonna be really fun. And yeah, so. Let's pop in, we're popping this fuel pump up. We're gonna install the new one. The iRods, uh, I believe it's a 450, if I'm not mistaken. And it's an upgraded one. And uh, we're gonna take the OEM one. We're gonna install this one now that we finally got our built motor file for this bad boy um we're gonna go from there and see see what happens and see what she do and see how she feels now um with this new map you know give it a couple you know 100 miles or at least i think it's 100 miles or 60 miles you gotta drive it just so got everything could uh all the adaptations you know know where everything's at and we'll go from there and hopefully see how she feels uh just from the startup it was pretty uh pretty gnarly so uh stay tuned Today, uh, we are figuring out, you know, diag diagnosing uh, Mikey's uh, RS3. Uh, we had a little issue that we were getting a, a timing over advance on the vehicle. We thought it was the pigtail, we swapped that out. We thought it was the sensor, we swapped that out. And so it brought us to the conclusion, hey, you know what, let's just take the top half up of the side cover off, and uh, which is kind of a pain because you have to take a lot of things out to, you know, to get to this, as you can see, you know. So we have to, you know, burp the coolant and do all that stuff, reseal it, you know, and put it all back together. But what I found was that the actually uh, timing mark uh, on this chain, I'm having too much slack here, as you guys can see. So that tells me that I am, uh, it was telling me that the timing was way over advanced. So it was making this weird noise. Sometimes it'll come in on, you know, on and off. And I noticed that there was some little light marks here on the, on the actual cylinder head that it was just, that the chain, I guess it was just jumping and touching. I would say so it was making this weird noise and it was we were getting this, this um cold you know timing way over to advance so started checking it out started doing you know putting a TDC and checking everything out and um sure enough and I came across this that for somehow some reason well I guess it must have been uh uh my error or something like that you know that I left it um probably was a tooth off so now we have to um put it back on TDC lock the cams back in place and fix this issue because what it was doing also it was over extending the uh the timing chain um, tensioner. So as it pushes it out further out, it was uh, releasing oil out of the oil pressure relief valve right here in this hole. So it'll start making this noise and then an idle will go away. So hopefully hopefully my theory is correct. So we're gonna go ahead and check this and retime this motor again, make sure that it doesn't push that all the way out and that noise will go away and this car will be back in tip top in shape. So stay tuned guys. everyone so we have finally gotten the tune that I've been waiting on for the car this is the uh,
built motor file for the 710H hybrid turbo that I have from iRoz, um, which utilizes iRoz's um, upgraded low pressure fuel pump and Unitronics 4 bar map sensors. Sorry if I'm talking a little loud. Uh, neighbors are dynoing one of their R8s right now. this boy. Um, flashing with Uniconnect is pretty simple. You open up the app, um, I'm pretty sure, that, there we go. You open up the program, um, on 2019 models, uh, Audi put the stupid safety measure in where you have to have your hood popped. Our hood's open anyways because we're doing our fluids right now as well. But um, it checks your VIN, you have to make sure that everything's good, and then you go into the engine performance flashes. That's just all of the issues that my car's been dealing with right now. And then you have your list of stages, and I've got a few. And what I'm looking for is this boy. So, 8,000 RPM limit, just crazy. Um, I rise low pressure fuel pump, four map sensors, 4,000 RPM launch control, and they're just making sure that I flash it with the correct stage three um, TCU file, which is for the transmission. So now is the boring part. We click this boy and get everything going, and then we get to wait around for it to flash. So, what happened was, forgot to do one of the vacuum lines from the intake to the throttle body, and also um, one of the vacuum uh, plugs to the valve cover um, to mess with the uh, exhaust cam, uh, that plug popped off too. So. Got both of those problems fixed, and we're hoping that everything's good this time around. So, um, we fixed the vacuum leaks, and me and Reese went and did a couple pulls down the street. Um, in Mexico. In Mexico. And um, the more, because because we just flashed the maps 
um, and also relearn the cams. You have to drive the car around. The more you drive it, the more it adjusts and relearns itself. So um, we were just relearning it. We weren't doing anything illegal, and um, it pulled amazing. Like I'm, I'm stoked with it. Uh, the tune seems to be giving it the extra like punch that it should have, and. I'm like beyond happy to finally have the car finished. Good morning, everybody. Uh, we're here at Nobody Performance. I think this is probably the same video, right? Yeah. So okay, yeah, we're we're still here. So okay. Shop. We're still we're still here, the same place that we were that we've been at. Um, we had an issue with the RS3. Um, on the top end, we were hearing some noises, and I kept on getting a bunch of uh, cam sensor codes. We took off one of the side covers to get to the um, the cam gears and or the cam sprockets and uh, found that the timing was off. So JR plopped them off, we reset everything um, with the chain and that had the car driving a little bit better. Um, but there was a, a ticking coming from the top end that uh, we had believed were the lifters at first and after pulling off the valve cover, which on these cars, the cams come with the valve cover, we saw that these boys, which are apparently described as cam washers, um, we were missing one on each cam. So outer one on this one, inner one on okay. that boy. And um, yeah, so we were able to thankfully overnight, the new washers from Audi. They came in this morning. We're gonna be putting them on today, getting the car all put back together, and hopefully that'll fix like every problem that the car's been having. So we will just see how it goes and update you guys from there. Okay, ready? So before, because of the oil pressure not being able to get to the AB ABCSs, like it couldn't retard or advance timing correctly. So like even when I was getting up there in the RPMs and stuff, it, it wasn't doing its job to run like optimally. Right. Now it will. Now she's good. And even before we just did this, whenever me and Reese went out to do a test drive and stuff, after we like thought that we'd fixed the problem and everything, like it still felt way better because of this new the new tune that I'm on. Right. So like that plus the car actually running like 100% healthy is gonna be. Can you? Uh, does it sound quieter from in there? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I see. I only went road in it once, and, and even from out there, it sounded like way quieter. And I was like in the engine bay, mm -hmm. so it's like definitely quieter. Yeah. Yeah, dude. She's gonna be nasty. Oh, it's not neutral. Yeah, it's a neutral. <laughs> Here 
right guys uh we're back again with the rs3 uh we actually figured out the issue with the car there was some some cam rings that go on there and uh one of them was well, actually car cam rings right the cam rings that's what they were called cam washers cam cam washers that's what they call them but to me they're like rings and uh, what, what was causing the issue the noise on the engine was that one of them was halfway broken so oil pressure was seeping out of the cam sprocket so it was not building enough oil pressure so it was causing a tick like a lifter tick on the engine which we thought it was lifter tick we thought one of them probably was bad it was blown out so uh, we actually took it apart and as I'm going through all the lifters and I do not see anything I cannot find it for the life of me so as uh, so we look and I had they had the whole um, valve cover slash cam holder all together at once and I had it on the table I said it was on the table I was just so started looking at it and I started looking again at the engine like man what can it be what's causing the issue so I found this little piece of a, the ring and it was like hmm what is this so as I was going started going through it and I found that, that that little ring goes on the cam and it uses two of those per 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 cam so what that does it it retains oil pressure in there in, in that little space of the cam the tip of the cam and it fills up the actual cam um, sprocket so we were seeping a lot of oil pressure out of it. that's why we would get noise it'll come and it'll go and it'll go away it'll come back and it'll go away so after I don't know, quite a couple hours, you know, going through it. We actually found, like I said, we found the problem. We went and ordered them straight to Audi and uh, overnighted them. Got them installed on the car. Problem fixed on the car. Lights turned off. Noise went away. So we're out for a test drive. Uh, we'll let you know how it goes. I think the clutch is slipping now. It's too much power. You got to turn it down. And you got a V6 charger. <laughs> Yes, sir. They lost a chunk of the car, so Raymond and KB to the rescue. Yes, sir. Hey, everyone, Junior over here at Nobody Performance. Well, as we were working on Mikey's car, um, we thought that we had an issue that the uh, clutches were slipping inside the transmission because it was getting around to about 6,500, 6,000 RPMs, and the car was uh, was like I want to say it's like it was slipping. But at the same time, it sounded like a sputter. But um, then again, we came back to the shop and we, you know, we started checking out the fluid on the transmission. We checked it out. We let it be be at uh, at uh, at the cooling temperature to actually measure the fluid. I believe it was uh, 100 degrees Can't be above that. It has to be either less than that. Just between, you know, I want to say 70 degrees to 100 degrees. Anything above that, you, you're doing it wrong. Well, anyways, well, we checked the fluid and the fluid was just slightly bit over full. 
So we drained it out, we, we put it to spec and uh, put the car, you know, we lowered the car back again, went for another test drive and no luck. It kept sputtering or something like that. We thought it was the clutch was slipping like it was, cause it was making, I mean, it was pulling very hard. And as it pulls, it felt like it was slipping. But then we came back, back to the shop and we started checking it out. And I remembered my neighbor, Sheepy, Alex, over here at Sheepy Race, uh, had an issue, similar issue with an Audi R8 on the dyno. And it'll, it'll reach about 6,500, 6,000, and the car will start sputtering. They thought also, too, the clutches were slipping. Uh, at the moment of time, for him, to, you know, you know, tinkering with it, lo looking for everything, you know, and checking everything out, he came, he came across that one of the injector pigtails was bad on the car. So they actually fixed the problem, and that was their issue. But guess what? Our issue was the same thing. I guess when we had it out, one of the, we never disconnected the secondary injectors on the second rail, but I guess from probably moving the harness over, it must have somehow got unplugged. So I came back and we popped the hood and I, and I just started checking them, checking them and checking them. And sure enough, when we pushed down, click, it went in. As it went in, Mikey looked at me like, oh, that's not gonna be it. Like, no, that's not it. I'm like, all right. We went, we got in the car, went for a test drive. We busted a U-turn and uh, went down Mexico road and uh, Gave it uh, the two, three, four, and uh, there was no sputtery all the way to red line. The RS3 is back in business. It's running great and stronger than ever. Um, just waiting for another, probably a couple revisions on the tune or not, you know, if there is or not. And uh, keep enjoying this car and uh, watch them out on the street. It's pretty quick.